Okay everyone, in this video I'm going to show you some of the hidden tips and tricks for iOS 13 that you probably did not know about. Let's begin. What you can also do is to leave a comment if you already know about these things, and if you do, I'm really glad, because you can use iOS 13 in a good and a proactive way, but if you don't, then you probably find it useful. And I'm doing this video because some of my friends and people who I know that use iOS 13 like have like no idea about it, so I decided to compile it into like one video, but let, now let's finally get started. So the first trick is actually going to make your life a lot easier, and it's gonna make sure that your scrolling behavior is going to change after this so whenever you go to the settings or somewhere where you need to scroll you can see that if you zoom it like that or if you move your thumb you move your finger you can see that we have the scrolling bar right here which indicates where in the page you are and how much is left till you get like to the end of the site you can see it right here you can see this is the scrolling bar but what you can do right now is to by what you can do right now is to simply haptic touch it it means just like long press in it it's the substitute for 3d touch but anyways you need to long press it you get a haptic feedback and now you can move your finger up to down and scroll very quickly you can get to the bottom of the page you can get to the top everything is so smooth and everything works really well but it doesn't only work in the settings it doesn't only work in the native apps it works pretty much everywhere where the scrolling bar is available but if you cannot see it you have to scroll a little bit at first to trigger it to make it show up and then you can just grab it by holding on it of course on the iphone 11 pro we don't have the 3D touch anymore so you haptic touch it and you can actually move very quickly. By the way if you guys are new here on this channel if this video is the first thing that you have seen from my channel and if you don't want to miss some future updates future videos regarding Apple, iPhone, uh, iPads, Apple watches, software updates and stuff like that then definitely smash the subscribe button as hard as you can it's free of course and it's just gonna make you and keep you updated and you will know everything what's going on so let's just continue with the video so let's move on to the tip number two if you are in Safari you know that if you hold down to this icon the the menu tabs you get the option to go to the new one to go to a private one and to close them all so you can see the exact number but this is not new in iOS 13 it has been here but if you want to manage your tabs a lot more effectively I would say then you need to turn on the settings and turn on the option in the settings for Safari so make sure you find it and within the settings you are able to pick and choose specify how long the tabs in Safari should be open so you can say that after some some time period uh, the tabs are gonna be automatically removed and closed I'm not sure if you can actually see it but it's called close tabs and if you click on it you can choose it to be manual so they don't close by themselves uh, they they can close after one day <clears throat> after one week or after one month this is how I choose it to be and this is very useful of course the Safari in general there are many new and cool features and changes in here like there are more options and you can specifically choose some uh, some settings for a specific website you can say that if I open a, this specific website I want this behavior I want to have like a desktop version immediately I want to go to the reader mode I mean, it's very useful. The iOS 13 w was really focused on these kind of smaller changes as well. They didn't really advertise it or didn't really say it when they were releasing the iOS 13, but it's full of these kind of little changes. There is one feature that was specifically part of the Android and it was like kind of shame that Apple didn't doesn't really have it. And it's the ability to go from here right to the Wi-Fi settings. So right now you can actually turn it on and off. Actually, you can't because it only disconnects you, but if you hold down to it, I mean, you have to do the, the 3D or haptic touch. You can see that you have access to some of the additional settings and to the Wi-Fi networks. If you go to the Bluetooth, you can see you have some uh, options and some Bluetooth devices in um in the surrounding area so you can actually jump to the to the actual settings right here 
and you're going to be moved to the settings. So it's kind of useful. I know you probably didn't expect to see it there because if you know that it's not there, you're not going to force or long press on that icon waiting for what's going to happen if you know that there isn't anything that's supposed to happen. But right now it works like that. And this is another tip that I would like to give you. Of course, if you know about it, it's only good. But if you don't, I mean, yeah, then now you know. The next step or trick that I would like to show you is that you can take a huge screenshot. If you heard about it, then you are like excited that you can have that. But it's not the way but it's not really how it works. Well, you can technically, of course, go ahead and take a huge screenshot. I'm gonna show you how you can do it in just a second, but if you try to save it, it's not gonna be saved as a JPEG file in your camera roll. It is just gonna be saved as a PDF. And you know, there's a problem with iPhones that we do not have like a file browser right there. So it means that it can only save it to some third party app or it can save it to your iCloud and to your files uh, files app but you would expect it to save it as a picture which would be so much more comfortable i would say but this is not how it works it's mostly going to be used in safari so you trigger the screenshot just like that you click on it and here you have a new tab called the entire page so you click on this and you can simply zoom it out like that and here you can see how much how much is being used you cannot actually grab the completely entire screen but you can go as far as this. So yeah, it, it kind of works. I mean, I don't really have complaints with this. Of course, it would be nicer to get the, the, in, the entire page in it. But the problem is when you click on done and to click on save it, you can already see that this is a PDF file. So again, it's not a picture. So all you can do is to simply save it to your iCloud drive or on my phone, you can actually go to some of the things, some of the options that the iPhone offers you. You can use the third party app. You can go in and take it to your numbers pages to Snapseed even. I mean, I mean, the idea and the feature overall seems to be good and it's good actually, but it's, it would be even more useful if it would be like a, like a normal picture. Are you okay with the fact that this is a PDF? Oh, let me know down below in the comments. I'm really, I just really want to know what you guys think. But this is kind of counterintuitive because on the iOS 12, you can click on the share icon and there you have a specific tab, which is going to, if you click it and it says create a PDF. And if you click it, it just creates a PDF for you. And it's the same thing with the difference that you can save the entire page. Whereas now if you take a screenshot, as you could see, you only get to the half of it. So it's kind of annoying and I have no idea why it works like that. Of course, it seems to be kind of a step back when it comes to saving websites as PDFs. But in the, in the other apps, for example, in the messages if you want to save the entire conversation or some other things then it may be useful because the screenshots work everywhere okay and the last ever feature in this video is something that isn't like really something that you will turn on and see immediately but it has to do something with the battery so if you go to the settings and open up the battery section right here and if you go to the battery health you can see that there is a new toggle, a new option. And if you turn it on, it's just basically gonna do one thing. It's just gonna optimize your battery life and the charging, you know, it means that if the phone actually learns your schedule, it learns when you connect your phone to the wall, when you charge it, and based on your behavior, it's trying to simply charge your phone in this way, in the way that it doesn't damage the battery in any way, because you probably know it's not the best idea to simply stuck your iPhone into the wall to connect it and have it charge throughout the entire night and wake up in the morning, I mean, of course, your battery is gonna be at 100%, but it damages the battery cycles, and technically, it's not the best idea to do. So, when this feature is turned on, your phone actually learns to behave accordingly, and it just charges the 80% normally, and the remaining 20% are gonna be charged based on you, based on your behavior, so they, it knows when you are supposed to wake up, so it's just going to just stretch it out and it's not gonna just blast it all to your battery in, and of course it's not gonna damage it. So it's a nice feature, it's a nice touch. I really think that you should take a look at it 
it's it's something that every iOS 13 user should simply turn on because we don't want to ma damage our batteries but this is pretty much the end of this video if you like I said if you found some of these helpful then um, leave a like on this video and if you know about some of these already then let me know which are not new for you let me know which are the features that you already use so i'm really i'm really excited to see what you guys leave in the comments so subscribe for more videos in the future and see you guys later in the next one peace out